Hello everyone and thank you for joining us. My name is Joanne Collins and I'm an analyst at Edison Investment Research. I'm joined today by Taiko Satoshi, who is lead advisor at Atlantis Japan Growth Trust. Taiko, hello. Hello, Joanne. Let's begin today with a look at performance over the past year. Since the AGM last year in September, what have been the key factors affecting the fund's performance? Good question. From the war in Ukraine and the tensions between China, Taiwan, and the US to the ongoing COVID pandemic end, from inflation and talks, talk recessions to Japanese politics, there has been a lot to consider this year. The single biggest challenge for the fund came when the market realized that global inflation was not temporary and that the US Fed was going to have to raise interest rates aggressively to try and rein in inflation. As a result, there was a huge shift early this year from growth to value worldwide, including in Japan. Additionally, the sell-off in global tech stocks since the end of last year has created a further challenge for the fund as we tend to have high ratings in technology stocks. Although the Bank of Japan is on a different course from the Fed and other central banks, maintaining its easy monetary stance, this shift to value and tech sell-off have also been seen in Japan. While the growth to value shift may not have ended, we saw a major reversal in July from a value back to growth. Whether this will continue is difficult to say, but it was a significant move, and it reflected a change in sentiment worldwide from inflationary to recessionary concerns. Following lower than expected US inflation and falling commodity prices. Finally, I'd like to note that many companies in the fund have weathered the neg negative environment quite well and have managed to maintain good earnings growth. However, due to the broad based nature of the sell off, this earnings growth has not been reflected in their share prices. We expect corporate earnings to be one of the major catalysts for markets to turn upwards and when this happens, naturally these companies are likely to outperform. What were the key surprises of the past 12 months and what impact have these had on your investment outlook? In addition to the shift from growth to value, the war in Ukraine has raised geopolitical tensions and the on-off nature of the COVID pandemic has continued to disrupt markets. Furthermore, the sharp drop in the value of the yen has been a big surprise for almost everybody. The ongoing war in Ukraine and the extended period of lockdown in China have had a large impact on supply chains and resulted in increased costs for business across the spectrum. This caught the market by surprise and caused a much longer than expected delay to the recovery of supply chains and manufacturing company earnings. In Japan, quasi lockdowns and stalled reopenings have had a negative impact on consumer sentiment and unlike many other countries, Japan has yet to see a post-COVID bounce in consumer spending. Japan is also one of the few countries globally yet to lift travel restrictions for foreign tourists. Consequently, inbound tourism hasn't recovered at all as it has in many other countries. All of the above has meant that the bounce in corporate earnings that we have been looking for has been pushed back and has made us more cautious about increasing our gearing. With regard to the weaker yen, 
This is closely linked to global inflationary pressures, and I think it is fair to say that it took everyone by surprise. In general, Japanese companies do not benefit as much as they used to from a weaker yen, as many manufacturers have moved production overseas and input costs are rising. However, most of the companies in our fund have a high market share with competitive ad advantage, which allow them to pass on at least some of the increased costs. Around 30% of the stocks in our fund are exporters and will likely see some benefit from a weaker yen. Given the growth bias of the portfolio, where have the best opportunities arisen over the past 12 months in your view? As I have previously mentioned, due to economic and geopolitical considerations, we have been cautious about making new investments over the past 12 months. Areas where we have increased our exposure and are actively looking for further opportunities include digital transformation, unique business models or services, and specialized technologies. Japan is lagging much of the rest of the world in terms of digital transformation, and we believe that our fund is well positioned to benefit as companies and sectors digitalize. Of course, we are constantly looking for new opportunities and companies to invest in and are well primed to act at the appropriate time. Which sectors and stocks have been a significant driver or a drag on performance over the past year? Sectors that have weighed most heavily on the fund have been services, electrical machinery, and information technology. Companies that have underperformed and where we have either liquidated or reduced our holdings include Fast, Renova. The company failed in a bid for two offshore wind power generating projects, which would have doubled its energy production. We sold the entire position, which accounted for over 4% of the portfolio, and made over 100% return on the investment. Also, IR Japan Holdings. The company was hit by a scandal involving insider trading by one of the firm's directors and disappointing earnings. We sold the entire holding. Finally, Nihon M&A. We have been investing in this company for over 12 years now. In December 2021, the company announced that they would postpone the announcement of the third quarter result by more than one month. These announcement delays are almost always for negative reasons, and we sold half of our position on the news. In February, the company disclosed the result of an internal investigation regarding revenue apportionment and booking. The issues were timing related, and the company has taken measures to prevent the same problems happening in the future, and the revenue is now booked on a cash-in basis. The merger and acquisition environment in Japan is still very good, and we will continue to hold the remaining position. Now I will talk about some of the outperformers in our fund over the past 12 months. Firstly, Japan Material, a niche technology and material-related companies with a unique business model. Japan Material offers total facility management to semiconductor and LCD factories. This includes the materials and labor that are indispensable for the continuous operation of factories. As companies diversify production away from the traditional semiconductor hub of Taiwan, Facilities in Japan are being expanded and new ones are being built. This shift is increasing demand for the products and the services of Japan material. 
they have no direct competitors because while other comp companies can provide materials, they cannot offer the total facility management of Japan material. Next, Premium Group is an ex example of a niche independent financing provider for the second-hand car market. They have over 10% market share in the auto loans business. Unlike their competitors, they have no ties to any financial institution and therefore can provide other services such as automobile warranties, auto parts sales, repairs, and servicing. These additional offerings differentiate premium group from their bank affiliated competitors and make them the finance provider of choice for many used car dealerships. The company continues to increase its market share and earnings growth. Finally, Internet Initiative Japan is a digital transformation play which provides system integration and network services, including MBNO services, cloud services, cybersecurity, and connectivity infrastructure. Over 80% of sales are from recurring business connected to network services and system integration. The company is improving its profit margin by focusing on the higher margin business of network services rather than system integration. As companies increase spending on DX, IIJ intends to expand sales and profits from undertaking large-scale system integration related network replacement projects. Additionally, IIJ is rapidly expanding its MBNO corporate mobile contracts for 5G services and IoT both of which are structural growth businesses. Have there been any new themes or areas of focus for you over the last year? Historically, our main investment themes have been healthcare, technology, infrastructure, and niche business models. We believe these are multi-year themes and continue to offer excellent investment opportunities. Over the past one or two years, digital transformation has become a new theme in the market and one that fits in well with our investment style. As with our other themes, DX is broad and contains companies offering a wide range of products and services, including 5G, IoT, software, consulting, engineering, and so on. As I mentioned earlier, Japan is behind the curve in terms of digitalization and companies are increasing spending. We consider DX to be an important and disruptive theme that will continue for the foreseeable future. Another interesting area that we have been looking at is something that I, I call defensive growth. This is a not new theme. Moreover, a way of categorizing certain companies across our themes. Defensive growth companies have low export ratios, which gives them a defensive quality. They also enjoy high structural growth and benefit from market consolidation and new and disruptive trends. Examples of defensive growth stocks that have performed well over the past year include the three stocks that I mentioned earlier, Japan Material, Premium Group, and Internet Initiative Japan. Plus, Ambis Holdings, an operator of nursing care and hospice facilities with 100% of its sales in Japan. Thanks, Taiko. And finally, what key factors will affect the performance of the fund over the next 12 months, do you think? As we noted earlier, the biggest challenge for the fund over the last year was a dramatic shift from value to growth and the 
technology sell-off. Furthermore, small cap stocks have significantly underperformed large cap stocks over the last four years. Along with the shift to growth stocks that we saw in July, there were also signs of a pickup in small cap stocks, which is positive for the fund, with its bias towards growth and small cap companies. We are not convinced that the sharp shift back to growth and small cap stocks in July marks a turning point for markets, but it does clearly show what will happen when markets do eventually turn upwards. Here, I would like to mention several factors that may contribute to a turnaround in the market. As Japan further reopens, the domestic economy should start to feel the effect of the stimulus packages introduced throughout the pandemic. It is worth recognizing that this post-pandemic bounce is coming later than in many other countries, as Japan has been far slower in lifting restrictions. Additionally, ongoing improvement in governance, driven by the Corporate Governance Board, continue to enhance long-term returns and unlock value. Moreover, with greater focus from activists taking an increased interest in Japan, we should see further developments in corporate reform, either through corporate divestitures or steady increase in hostile takeover bids. We believe improved corporate earnings will be the catalyst for investors to turn their attention towards growth stocks and drive the performance of the fund. Corporate earnings for the fiscal year ended March 2022 were up over 30% as the economy started to recover. We expected this to continue into the year ending March 2023, but the ongoing war in Ukraine, disruptions caused by lockdowns in China, inflation, and a worsening global economy have delayed the expected recovery in corporate earnings. Before I conclude, I would like to add that, historically, our gearing has been very low. In April, we started to increase it a little because we felt corporate earnings would push markets higher. As I mentioned earlier, we now believe that the turnaround in corporate earnings will come later than we originally anticipated. For this reason, we will be cautious about increasing gearing further at this time, but we are ready to act when appropriate. Our cautious optimism of earlier this year, driven by expectations of improved earnings, has been somewhat dampened by adverse geopolitical and economic events. Consequently, this cautious optimism has been replaced by caution, which will be the key for the next 6 to 12 months. Of course, the situation can change rapidly, and we remain vigilant. Thank you for that, Taiko, and thanks also for your time and your thoughts today. Thanks to our listeners for joining us. If you'd like any further information about this fund, please Contact the team at Quero Capital in London. Thank you and goodbye.